is Francie. She's divorced and ready for marriage again. Which one of these men did she choose? Which one will our audience choose? And this is Charles. He likes women with smooth skin, long legs, and loving eyes. We showed him videotapes of these three women, and he picked one as his date. Which one did he choose? Which one will our audience choose? Today on Love Connection, you'll find out who they pick, who the audience picks, and everything that happened on their dates. Now, here to tell us more about Love Connection is our host, Chuck Woolery. You know, there are more than 60 million single adults in the United States, so here on Love Connection, we've got a new way for singles to meet. Here's how it works. We've compiled a videotape library of, a, of hundreds of attractive and available single people. We select some of those singles, and we show them three videotapes. After they've watched the tapes, they choose the one they're most attracted to and go out on a date. Then they come here and they tell us what happened on their date. So to begin, let's meet a woman who selected a date from our video library. She's a native Californian. She says she's irresponsible and loves to be in love. Please welcome Francie Wallace. Francie. Well, what does it take for you to fall in love, Francie? I need something really romantic. Someone that smokes and drinks cigarettes and I mean, smokes, smokes and drinks cigarettes. Yeah. And drinks cocktails and can lift me. And can lift you? Can lift me. Did your now you're divorced, yes? I'm divorced. Francie, what went wrong? One day he would want to be a movie star and the next day he'd want to make mortar and the next day and he'd want to be a producer and a meat man and each week he'd see an ad and that's what he'd want to be. <laughs> it was like he didn't know how to go to me. That's right. Now that we know a little bit more about you, I'm going to say something here. We're going to show you a portion of the tapes that Francie saw. Now, you pay attention, okay, because you're going to get to vote again. First, there was Marty. He was raised in Cleveland. He says he likes to chase women, and here's one reason that he's never been married. I've had, uh, I would say, uh, three meaningful relationships. I think I've been in love once. My being in love was uh, simultaneously beautiful and very frustrating. Uh, it was with a married woman, and uh, it lasted about six months. And finally, her husband beat me up, and they moved out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Next up was Mark. He's from Los Angeles. He loves to spend time with his daughter, and he says he's not into the single scene. I don't think I've ever met somebody in a bar. Maybe once, once or twice. I don't think I am looking all that hard. I think I could look harder. But uh, I've been through periods when I looked very hard and didn't come away any better. Okay, and finally you watched Eric. Now, he was raised in New York City, likes to gamble. Sometimes he gets a little carried away, he says. In a passionate moment, I actually swallowed a girl's earring, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my cheek was against hers and I was inhaling the <laughs> He's from Los Angeles. He loves to spend time with his daughter. And he says he's not into the single scene. I don't think I've ever met somebody in a bar. Once, once or twice. I don't think I am looking all that hard. I think I could look harder. But uh, I've been through periods when I looked very hard and didn't come away any better. Okay, and finally you watched Eric. Now, he was raised in New York City, likes to gamble. Sometimes he gets a little carried away, he says. In a passionate moment, I actually swallowed a girl's earring. You know? <laughs> I was inhaling a little and uh, I swallowed an earring in the... I mean, I didn't stop because I'm too, too, too well-mattered for that, but I... <laughs> oh, shit! Okay. Before we find out who Francie chose as her date, let's see all three of them again, okay? First, there was Marty. Now, he's 33. He's a musician. And then there's Mark. He's a 35-year-old attorney. And finally, Eric. He's a publisher. He's 34. And this is where you do it, audience. It's time to vote again. Now, who do you think is the best date for Francie? Here in the studio and at home, please make your choice now. Okay, now right after this break, we're going to find out who uh, Francie selected and everything that happened on her date. So you stay tuned, okay? Okay, we're back. Francie, who did you select? I selected Rick. Okay. Now, on Love Connections, we always hear both sides of the date, okay? And Rick is backstage, and uh, we're going to say hello to Rick Stuff. Hi, Rick. Hello. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Good. 
Hey, I'll talk to you in just a minute. I want to ask uh, uh, Francie something here. Why did you pick Eric? I picked him because he was the tallest. And he sounded really funny. I love the earrings story. I thought it was being really small. I did too. Eric, what was your impression of him? Interesting lady with an interesting idea for a date. I was intrigued. Why don't you tell us about your date? Let's I, see how had, I had it such was. a creative idea. Did you? I rented a limousine. Whoa! And I called him up and I said, okay, I'll meet you in front of a bowling alley in the valley. <laughs> and you're supposed to wear a black tie. Tuxedo. Tuxedo. Okay. And he said, all right. And I well, I was a date. sport. <laughs> he was a sport. So I, we drove up to the you know boat to the bowling alley where we were supposed to be. Right in your limo. In my limo, and he didn't know about the limo. Oh. So we drive up, and I see my date standing at this porno bookstore. Oh dear. <laughs> And brown shoes. So I was, oh, oh, no. I was like devastated. Okay, so you, you, you get there. And what's, what happens next? So then my limo driver opened the door and he said, you know, he told Rick that I was the person. And I I think he opened the door and I said, champagne. You know, really. Yeah, nice. and champagne and little plastic glasses. Oh, <laughs> yeah, plastic. Right. So he came into my limousine and we talked and, you know. What did you have on now? You had a tuxedo. What did you oh. have on, Rick? You know, the, the nice part about her outfit was she had a, a hat with a veil on. It was very, uh, it, was, it fit the scene. It was nice. <laughs> we drove to the beach. Drove to the beach. And that was it. What? It was like, we just drove. And, oh, it was really neat. I had champagne and crackers and cheese. And so we kept giving cheese to the driver. <laughs> the sandwiches, it was really terrible. There's really three of us, actually. The driver was quite a nice guy. I liked it. <laughs> I'm the long dress. Yes. So we're walking up a lighthouse in high heels and a long dress. Yes. And taking pictures. We think you were just so adorable. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was so unmemorable. What time? Unmemorable? unmemorable? Oh, it wasn't good then. I don't know. What time happened. of the day was this? I, p I met him at 8. In the morning? At night. Oh, at night. But I only had the limo for two hours. 8 <laughs> Eight to ten. Yeah. Yeah. Takes longer to get warmed up. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but you're the guy who ate earrings off a woman's ear. What happened? I wasn't to you? hungry. You were hungry. <laughs> well, how, how, did it, how did it really end? I had a date at ten thirty. Oh, that's how it ended. That's it. Okay, let's take a look and see the audience. Marty, fifty-six percent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Marty, fifty-six percent. Okay. Now here's the deal. What are they? All right. Mean? If you follow the audience's advice, we'll <laughs> send you out on another date oh, no. with Marty. Oh, you no. don't want to do that? No, no, no. He's too short, and he's just got weird ideas. Well, listen. I want to thank you, Rick. Thank you very much for uh, being on the My show. My pleasure. We have a nice gift for you. Maybe we'll see you again. Thanks a lot. Okay. By the way, we have a nice gift for you. Good. Thank you so much for being with us. Okay, we're back. This time, let's meet a man who chose a date from our video library. He's a native Californian who says that women often approach him because he looks like Chris Christopherson. Sure enough, he does. Please welcome Charles Cosa. Charles? Hi, Chuck. How are you? We good. You really do. I was mentioning to you earlier that uh, Chris is a friend of mine. You do look a lot like him. It's incredible. Yeah. This, this you probably is... hear this all the time, don't you? Yeah, it's absolutely incredible being a bartender. Uh, I hear it probably 10,000 times a year. You get a lot of dates just because you look like Chris? Well, yeah, I get to be uh, selective, let's say. The women, uh, what do they do when they find out you're not? Obviously, some of them think you are well, in different places. Obviously, yeah. People think I am, but... The places I hang out aren't the places that Chris Christopherson hangs out. Does it help? <laughs> oh, definitely. definitely. <laughs> it helps. Yeah. Look, I tell you what, we're going to show you a portion of the tapes that Charles saw, so watch closely because you're going to get to vote again, okay? First, there was Barbara. And she's from Chicago. She's a marathon walker who likes to eat, and she doesn't mind being alone sometimes. I, I don't feel the need to be out with a man every single night of my life. I enjoy being by myself. I'm very selective, and when I like somebody, I like them a lot. And it's usually somebody very special that I can have long conversations with and, and um, do you know the things that I enjoy doing. Next, there was Suzanne. Now, she's from Tennessee. She likes bicycle riding and long weekends, and here's something else that she likes. 
I like I like hairy men, you know, little hair, but I don't like hairy muscles. I don't know why. It's just kind of a caveman type thing. It's almost like dirty feet. You know? if it's dirty feet. You know, if they're if they're uh, you know construction work or something, you know. Um, Paul Newman could get away with him. <laughs> he could get away with hairy knuckles. Finally, you watch Denise. Now, she was raised in the Midwest. She's a bodybuilder who enjoys all sports. And here's the kind of men who turn her off. Someone who talks to you, but talks right through you. Like, like they want to look at someone else while they're talking to you. Or someone that um, talks about their old girlfriend or someone else, another female. You know, like you aren't even there. Now, before we find out who Charles chose, uh, let's uh, take a look at all three of them again, okay? First, there was Barbara. She's a 33-year-old uh, production coordinator. Then Suzanne, she's a credit analyst, and she's 27. Finally, Denise, she's a 27-year-old hairstylist. Okay, audience, it's time to vote again. Who do you think's the best lady for Charles? Here in the studio and at home, too. Please make your choice right now, okay? We're going to find out who the audience chose in just a moment. But first, let's find out who Charles chose, okay? He chose Suzanne. I chose Suzanne. All right, now, on Love Connection, we always hear both sides of the story. And Suzanne's backstage, so let's welcome Suzanne Blackburn. Hi, Suzanne. Are you there? Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne, I'll get back to you in just a moment, honey, okay? Okay. All right. Why'd you choose Suzanne for other for obvious reasons? I knew Suzanne was a good old gal as soon as I saw her, you know, being from Tennessee. And, you know, <laughs> I knew she was a good old gal. All right, well, Charles, Charles had the feeling. Charles thinks you're a good old gal, Suzanne. What was your first impression of him never seeing him before? Um, well, I talked to him on the phone, and he was a really nice guy. He was really easy to talk to. I think we talked for about an hour. All right, good. So you liked him? Yes. Yeah, liked him on the phone. What did you say think of him when you first saw him? Uh, the first time I saw him, I told him, you look like Chris Christopherson. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tell us about your date, Charles. Well, let's see. First, I went to pick her up, and I had a sheet of stickers, you know, transfer stickers. And mm -hmm. I said, well, which, which one do you want? You know, they said all kinds of things, like, I love the Raiders, I love the Dodgers, I love this, I love that. And then she came to the one that said, I love you. That's the one she picked up. Ooh. This is okay. You got I love you. Oh, sweet. And I thought that was a real good getting off point right there. You must have really liked him right off, huh? Yeah, I did. Um, usually, uh, some people you like, and uh, right away I liked him. He was really nice. He was a gentleman through the whole date, and uh, we had a really good time. Southern girls, boy, they're so sweet. <laughs> what happened next? <laughs> then we drove out to Dodger Stadium, got our place to park, and I says, well, it's time for breakfast. Oh, went to ballgame. Sure. Dodger Stadium. <laughs> so I got in the trunk and whipped out a bottle of champagne, and we had breakfast. <laughs> Called tailgate party. <laughs> well, what else happened, Suzanne? Um, well, after a few drinks, it was hard to remember exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, then we went to the game, and um, we got into a conversation with some gentleman in front of us, uh, or rather he did. About um, what? I don't remember. <laughs> and then she went to the bathroom one time, and the ladies, the two ladies behind us in the row behind us, you know, they had their two little daughters, and they wanted to get their picture taken with me and sign their programs and all that stuff. So I obliged by signing my own name. Oh, good. And she came back, and uh, I was trying to watch the ball game out of my left eye and listen to her talk in my right ear. And she talked quite a bit. Of course, I knew she would, because I knew she was a good old gal. <laughs> Suzanne, what happened then? Well, uh, then... He How was got... the ball game? Did you like the ball game? Uh, I don't remember a lot of the ball oh, good. game. <laughs> but it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and then we went back to uh, my house and spent a couple hours. <laughs> Really? You want to tell us about that? <laughs> well, we were both all tired by the time we got down. And so we just kind of <laughs> dozed off there. Yeah, yeah. just kind of lie down and take a little nap. Yeah. Well, how did how'd the date end? There? It ended there, yeah. I uh, After that, I went home just shortly after that. Fell asleep and woke up and... Something, it? Yeah, something like that. I... <laughs> You guys had a great time. You got the right idea. Right. <laughs> I'm kind of anxious to see who the audience picked on. Let's see if they had as I'm good a taste. Too. I'm okay? anxious as well. All right, let's take a look over here at the monitor and see. Big margin. 53% Suzanne. All yeah. right. Thank you, Suzanne. Audience knows it. All right. Well, we picked up the tab for the first date. We'd like to pick up the tab for the second date if you'd like to take Suzanne out again. Oh, I'd love to, Chuck. Thanks for offering. Suzanne, is that okay with you? That's excellent with me. Well, come on out here and join us on stage. Well, it seems for all this time.
Okay. You adjusted my time? You guys haven't seen each other for how long? All right. How long has it been? Um, almost uh, six, eight weeks. A long time. Like it's been a while then. Mm -hmm. Well, you got anything to say to each other? It's a souvenir of our uh, ball game. Oh, sweet. Thank you. I'll take that. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, that's what you like. You like Have anything to say to each other? About, uh, really? Oh, I missed you. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, let's go out Saturday night. Sounds great. Sounds good. <laughs> thank you very much for being on the well, show and for sharing your day with us. We really appreciate it. Now, on a previous show, the studio audience selected a date for our next guest. And when we return, we're going to find out what happened on that date. We'll be right back in just a minute. You know, last week, our next guest agreed to let our studio audience choose his date. We're going to meet him again and find out what happened on the date right now, okay? He was raised in New York City. He claims that women either really love him or they really hate him. Please welcome Benny Richards. Benny! Hey, Benny! How you doing, Paul? Ah, uh, now before we find out about the date and everything, let's, let's talk for a minute, okay? Last time you said you were a great boyfriend and a terrible husband. Explain that to me. Okay. It all comes down to percentages. Over to a marriage and 500 out of 1,000 approximately in boyfriend-girlfriend relationships. 500 out of 1,000. Right. It's half good, half bad. The other part is all bad. Okay. Last time you were on the show, we, we uh, showed the audience tapes of three women, and they chose one as your date. And Karen Marie Bosenberg, I believe it was, right? Karen Marie Bosenberg. Now you and Karen Marie went out, right? In a way. What do you mean, in a way, how? Where, what did you do? <laughs> my, it's, it's easy. The way my life's been running, I had chosen a week ago for the audience to pick for me because, you know, I've been doing a lousy job lately and I admit it. Now, uh, it turns out that the audience did a worse job that I could have done. <laughs> If I had concentrated in a period of a week, I ran up $117 in phone bill in the phone bill trying to reach her, but going back and forth. And when we finally did make a connection, she thought that it was a preliminary date, sort of like a tryout, where in effect it was the uh, actual date. Oh, now that's, this is normally a time, by the way, when we would meet Karen Marie, but I've been told she's not here. <laughs> I think you better tell us well, what happened. Why wouldn't she be here? She said that if she did come on the show, that her boyfriend would kill her. Oh, gee. Have you ever been stood up before, man? Millions of times. Oh, millions of times. Okay. <laughs> so you're used to it by now. What's the difference? What happened with this person? Okay. We met at a uh, very, very nice restaurant. She ran in. And look completely unlike the videotape. Was she cute? She was cute. She was a little windblown, a uh, little spacey. Windblown? What do you mean windblown? If you drive a 69 white Buick convertible, you get windblown. Oh. I thought it was a new head, dude. <laughs> so uh, she, she wanted to meet me in order to see how our vibes were. And I told her, this is the date. This is it, man. Like, this, we're going on a date. She said, well, I like you very much, but we will... We'll have to have another date. This is like preliminaries. And, you know, she asked me questions like, are you interested in getting married? And obviously she didn't know my biography. So and she, she mentioned a very funny thing to me. She said that she uh, uh, usually went on longer dates than just a day or so. And, for instance, her last date was six and a half months. She, had, she met a very lonely guy and... <laughs> She, she went out with the guy that lasted six and a half months. It's a long date. She was in trouble right then because I told her it's not going to be nearly like, you know, if she makes six and a half hours of me, it's, uh, it's, it's a miracle. Yes, yeah, forget it. Did you do anything to offend her? No, I did absolutely nothing to offend her. At all. Did she remind you of either one of your ex-wives by any chance? It, <laughs> my ex-wives were like geniuses compared to <laughs> I don't know. They took away her aces, kings, queens. She didn't have a full deck. Maybe she had a couple of eights, sevens. It was rough. It was a rough, um, not it was another rough night for me. I see people that come out here. They're kissing, they're hugging, they're holding you. Thank God. Oh, they're going to see each other again. I can't have it. 
if, if someone shows up, I have a conversation for 20 minutes, I light a candle. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you light a candle. Two or three candles I'll light. It doesn't matter. Oh, gee. You had a tough time on this one, Vinny. Always. This is my life here. You know, Vinny, since your date didn't work out, I think it's only fair for us to offer you a, a date with another lady. Okay? Is that okay with you? This particular point in my life, anything's okay, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's take a look at the, the two that were left over, okay? One time. First, there was Becky. Now, she's divorced. She's 31 years old. Kind of cute. Next, there was Marcia. She's 37. She's never been married. She's kind of cute, too. Would you like to go out with one of these ladies? I'd like to go out with both. I'll start with the uh, number one. <laughs> So you're going to go out with Becky, right? Right. We're going to pick up the tab for that. Again. <laughs> again. We'll pick up the tab again. I want you to go out on a date. I hope you have a great time. So do I. And come back real soon and tell us what happened, okay? I'll be back tomorrow night. <laughs> That's our show for today. We're going to be back tomorrow with more singles trying to make a love connection. I'm Chuck Woolery. I'm going to be right here. Some guests on Love Connection will receive one of the following. Jovan Musk. Drop for drop, Jovan Musk has brought together more men and women than any other fragrance in history. Try it today and see for yourself. Jovan Musk. Or a tote bag from Pan American World Airways. Across the country and around the world, serving six continents, 47 countries, and over 110 cities. Pan Am, you can't beat the experience. Or a versatile, full-valued, 106-channel public service scanner radio. Scan for the action with Regency. Or the Wide Receiver. Univax Dual Purpose Quart Unbreakable Stainless Steel Thermos. Wide Mouth for Foods, Narrow Neck for Beverages. Available with tote bags from Univax. This is Rod Roddy speaking for Live Connection.